outstanding theater of thrills, the master of mystery and adventure, William N. Robeson. Murder will out, they say. And you can't keep a good man down, they say. But what pithy piece of folk wisdom covers the criminal who is a good man? That's what our story is about. A good man with a past. A criminal who returns to a reasonable facsimile of the scene of his crime. Listen. Listen, then, as John Lund stars in For Old Time's Sake, which begins in just a moment. And now... For Old Time's Sake, starring John Lund, a tale well calculated to keep you in suspense. Now, Mr. Winterfield, if you'll sign above your wife's signature, the house is yours. It'll be a day or two before the escrow will be... Uh, Mr. Winterfield? Bert, Mr. Nelson speaking to you. Uh, oh, I'm sorry. Just, uh, just sign here. Bert, you're acting so strange. What's the matter? Nothing, Helen, nothing at all. We don't see you nearly enough, Mr. Winterfield, considering you're one of our prominent businessmen. I don't think he likes banks. <laughs> I certainly hope that isn't the case. That was the case. I don't like banks. They make me nervous. I suppose because I helped stick up a few years ago when I was only a kid. Oh, I served my time, but I still don't like banks. I don't suppose I've been in the First National a dozen times in the 15 years I've lived in Madison City. But I had to be there now when this nightmare All right, began. Folks, this is a stick up. The bank was being robbed. It was so familiar, like watching an old movie, that I kept waiting for Pinky to go into action. Waiting for Pinky to give the All orders. Right, don't move back into the vault. Go on, be quick about it. And there it was. It was Pinky's voice crowding in on me out of the past, shouting at me. You heard me, buddy. Get those hands up and turn around. I said, get those hands up. Now, turn around. Well, what do you know? <laughs> the rest of you people move back. Go on, into the vault. Not you, you stay. What do you want with him? Who's she? My wife. Tell her to get into the vault. Go on, Helen. What does he want, Bert? Please go, Helen. Lady, I told you to get... He means it, honey. Go on. Oh. Right. <laughs> Well, Bert, just like old times, isn't it? Cat got your tongue? Here, grab the sack. Must be your turn to take up the collection. You still remember how it's done, don't you? I was just a kid. I've done my time. Does your wife know? No, I never told her. Does anyone in this burg know? No. Not even the cops? No, no one. What do you do for a living? I own a hardware store. And nobody knows that you're an ex-con... Nobody. Then it wouldn't do you any good if people found out. Would it, Bert? No, it wouldn't. Come on, then. Hold that sack open. Why? Look, Pinky, I don't want to get mixed up in this. I've gone straight. I know, but you don't mind helping a pal for old time's sake, do you, pal? Now then, next cage. Leave me out of it. You want I should kill you? Well, what am I going to tell him? Nothing. After? Don't tell nobody nothing. You don't talk. I don't talk, see? But well, I'll give you a break. I'll make it look good. Hand over your wallet. Okay. There. Now you can say you was robbed, too. Man, you're loaded. <laughs> you must not trust banks. Hey, these your kids? Yeah. Where are you, huh? My wife and I dropped them off at the show. I'll bet you got big plans for these girls. Sure I have. In case you can't keep quiet for old time's sake, just remember these kids. You know what I mean? I know what you mean. Yeah. Where do you... Never mind, here it is. Albert Winterfield, 915 South Maple Street. I'll remember your address, Bert. 915 South Maple. If I happen to read about myself on page one of the morning paper, I'll be dropping in on you. Not next week, maybe. Or even next month. But I'll be back. Don't worry. I should worry? They're your kids, Bert. I'm aware of that. Here's your sack. You got all of it? Yeah. Okay, just a minute. All clear? All clear. Everybody tied up? Yeah. Uh, turn around, Bert. I can't waste time tying you up. Yeah, Pinky, I remember your style. For old time's sake, pal. Come on, boys. Let's get out of here.
emergency hospital at police headquarters with a couple of stitches in my head. The doctor told my wife she could take me home, but first there was a Lieutenant Williams from the robbery squad to get around. You feel well enough to answer a few questions, Mr. Winterfield? No, I don't. Won't take long. Some other time, huh? I'm afraid it's got to be now. Can you think of any reason why you were singled out to assist in the robbery? Well, no, I was forced to do it at gunpoint. What'd you two talk about? Well, nothing. You didn't talk? No. You didn't say anything to one another? I told you we didn't. Bert, that isn't what you... You started to say something, Mrs. Winterfield? What was it, Mrs. Winterfield? Nothing. It was nothing. Mrs. Winterfield, a few moments ago you told me that you saw your husband talking to the gun. Now, isn't that right? Well, I... Well, he, he might have said something. Yeah, in fact, he did. Uh, I remember now. He said, uh... Huh? What'd he say? Well, he, uh... Oh, oh, yeah. He said he was going to kill me if I tried anything. He kept saying that over and over. You better sit down, Mr. Winterfield. We might be here for some time. Now, uh, look, I'm not going to play games with you, copper. Bert. I've had enough of it, Helen. Now, unless you intend to book me, I'm going home. I'm not going to book you. And you know it. But I can't help feeling that you're covering up something. I don't care what you think. Am I free to go? Yeah. But you know, Mr. Winterfield, this is going to trouble me. It's going to trouble me until I find out what it's about. Be my guest. Helen, you coming? I guess so. Well, come on, let's go. I'll see you later, Mr. Winterfield. Bert, I'm waiting. Waiting for what? You haven't opened your mouth since we left the hospital. There isn't anything to talk about. There isn't anything to talk about. I should say there's a great deal to talk about. Get off my back, Helen. Bert, what is this? You never used that tone of voice to me before. Oh, I'm sorry. Bert, listen to me. If you're in trouble, I want to know about it. I want to help you. Nobody can help me. Bert, remember that promise we made when we were married? I don't know what you're talking about. Yes, you do. We promised we'd always tell each other the truth. We were awfully solemn about it, and I suppose maybe a little silly. But, darling, I've kept that promise. And I believe you have, too, up until now. I never kept it, Helen. Not from the moment I made it. Bert. I'm sorry, dear. I loved you so much. I wanted you. I needed you so badly. I was ready to promise anything. Yes? I'm an ex-convict, Helen. Oh, Bert, no. Yeah. Don't you see? I, I couldn't tell you. You wouldn't have married me. Yes, I would, Bert. That wouldn't have made any difference. It doesn't make any difference now. You sure? I'm positive. Then you knew that bank robber. Yeah. Why didn't you tell the lieutenant? Why should I? It's your duty as a citizen. Oh, is it? Of course it is. Now you're guilty of withholding information from the police. I can't rat, Helen. Rat? Is this man a friend of yours? Oh, not, no, not exactly. I... I, I used to work with him. Work? You... You mean you robbed banks with him? Yes. Are you wanted for anything now? Oh, no, Helen, no. That was a long time ago. I got caught. I went to prison. I'm clean. Oh. It frightens me to hear you talk like that. Clean. Rat. Copper. I don't like it, Bert. Let's go back and tell the lieutenant. I can't, Helen. You can't pretend this never happened. Well, let me worry about that, huh? I'm not going to do it. Pull over at that gas station. Why? Pull over, Bert. Stop the car. Oh, why, I said. I want you to call the lieutenant, Bert. I'm not going to do it. I can't. Bert, I want you to prove to me that the past is really over with. I have to know that. Please, Bert, call the lieutenant. I can't do it, Helen. Why? I have reasons. All right, then. I will. Helen, don't, Helen. Oh, 
Police department, please. Helen, I told you, you can't do this. Let go of that phone. Helen, listen to me. Do you want to get the kids murdered? What did you say? I said, do you want to get the kids murdered? You're... Just trying to scare me, aren't you, Bert? Oh, no, Helen. I'm serious. He wouldn't. Would he? He would. Can I still trust you, Bert? This hasn't... You wouldn't say this to... I'll leave that up to you. I'll be waiting in the car. Do you feel better now that you've done your duty as a citizen and taxpayer? The lieutenant wasn't in. Oh, good. That gives us a little time. For what? To use our heads. Helen, I don't have to tell the police anything. I'm not guilty of anything. Nobody but you knows that I serve time. That bank robber does. Oh, he's taken it on the lam by now. And he won't be back unless... And get this, Helen. Unless I go to the police. I know him. If I talk, he'll get me or you or the kids. Now, don't you see? The only sensible thing is to forget about it. Yes, Bert, whatever you say. Well, don't you see? I don't know, Bert. This is the first time I've had anything to do with criminals. I guess I'll have to depend on your wider experience. <laughs> What time will the kids be out of the show? I don't know. They'll phone. Oh, good. Give me time for a drink. I need one. What's for dinner? I haven't the slightest idea. Oh, come on, darling. I'm sorry, Bert. This is one day when dinner is not uppermost on my mind. All right, then. When the kids call, we'll both pick them up and we'll all eat out. How would you like that? Whatever you say, Bert. (gasps) Hiya, pal. What are you doing here? We had a little trouble getting out of town. They got Bugsy. And I got one of the cops. I'm a little hot, so I thought how nice it is to have an old pal in town. Aren't you going to introduce me to the little woman? Get out of here. Uh Uh-uh. I like it here. I want to get acquainted with your family, Bert. Where are the kids? Why, they... Oh, that's right. You said they were at the show. Be home soon? I don't know. Unless you leave this minute, I'm going to call the police. Get away from that phone. Bert, he's got a gun. Sure I got a gun. And it shoots. Real bullets. Now sit down and shut up. Don't answer it. But it might be the kids. Oh, yeah, the kids. And they'd think something was wrong if Mommy and Daddy weren't home. Okay, go ahead and answer it, Bert. Tell them to get on the bus and come home. No, Bert, don't let them come here. Tell them to go to the grandmothers. I don't want them here with this hoodlum. Oh, you shouldn't have said that, doll. But just to show you what a nice guy I am, I'm going to let you talk to the kids. Go on, answer the phone. Don't do anything foolish, Helen. You better tell those little kiddies to get on a bus and go home. Or they ain't going to have no mama. Please, Helen. Hello? Oh, hello, honey. No, no, don't Daddy won't be able to pick you up. We want you and Cindy to take a bus and go to Grandmother's. You... Remember, Grandmother. All right, doll, I want you. Wait, Pinky. You're going to need us. I'll still have you. No, no, listen to me a minute. I can pick up the kids at the bus stop. Don't do it, Bert. One more word out of that woman and I'll kill them both. I'll kill you right now. Let me handle it, Helen. Lady, you got anything more to say? Come on. Just one word. Any word. Okay. Now, don't you open your mouth again. All right, Bert, go get the kids. No tricks. Believe me, it would be a pleasure to kill this woman of yours. If one lousy cop shows up, she's dead. Now, beat it. Not knowing what to do.
do. It wouldn't make any difference to Pinky how many people he killed. If I picked up the kids, there was a good chance they'd get it too. But if I didn't, Helen would get it for sure. I was walking to my car when a squad car pulled up with two cops in front. Lieutenant Williams was one of them. Going somewhere, Mr. Winterfield? What do you want? I want to talk to your wife. The officer said she tried to call me. She hasn't anything to say to you? Well, as long as I'm here, I might as well hear it from her. You got a search warrant? I don't need a warrant to ring doorbell. You're not going in, Lieutenant. But go with that door. Look, don't, Lieutenant. You'll kill her. Who? The guy from the bank. He's in there with my wife. Get that on the radio, Joe. Tell the boys to close in. What if you'll get out of the way? Give me a break, Lieutenant. You've had all the breaks you'll get from me, mister. For my wife's sake, listen to me. Now, what's on your mind? Give me a gun. Give you a gun? Are you crazy? I'm the only one who would get close enough to save her. Even so, I can't give you a gun. How do I know you're not in this up to your ears? Believe me, I'm not mixed up in the robbery. Sure, I'm an ex-con, and I know the guy. We work together. But I'm not mixed up in this one. Please, Lieutenant, for my wife's sake. Are you sure he'll kill her? Might be bluffed. Oh, no, Lieutenant. I know this man. All right, Winterfield. I'll take a chance on you. I hope I won't live to regret it. You won't, Lieutenant. Oh, those idiots. Joe, tell them to shut off the sirens. I probably did it. Sorry, Winterfield. Give me the gun, Lieutenant. The guy can hear the siren. He's going to know that something's up. I got to take that chance. Give me the gun. Okay, Winterfield. Here you are. Good luck. Get away, Bert. He's going to kill you. Can you hear me, Bert? I can hear you, Pinky. Don't come in, Bert. Shall I kill a bird or are you coming in? I'm coming in, Pinky. Okay, drop the gun. Are you? Dirty rat. Yeah, I'm all right. Is, is he dead? Are you two okay? Yeah. But Pinky's dead, Lieutenant. I had to kill him. Yeah. He's dead, all right. I guess a lot of things died with him. Well, that's up to you, Lieutenant. Well, why don't you come in and tell me the whole story one of these days? Why? Right. I'll be glad to. I got nothing to hide now, have I, Helen? Nothing, darling. Well, then, let's go find those kids of ours. Suspense. In which John Lung starred in William N. Robeson's production of For Old Time's Sake, written by Gordon Christian. Supporting John Lund in For Old Time's Sake were Virginia Gregg, Bill Quinn, and Joe DeSantis. Listen. Listen again next week when we return with Elliot Reed in Four of a Kind. Another tale well calculated to keep you in suspense. Mm-hmm. 